Hello everyone, I'm Kaylin from the Homeschool Buyers Co-op and I hope you will join me in welcoming Dr. Heather Manley, MD, for today's webinar, Tips to Support Your Immune System During the Cold and Flu Season. Dr. Heather is a practicing doctor who received her medical degree in 2001 from National College of Neuro Naturopathic Medicine in Portland, Oregon. Dr. Heather lives and practices on the Big Island of Hawaii, where her focus is on preventative health care for families, providing a resource for families to learn more about preventative health care so they can be confident and proactive in their everyday health. Dr. Heather is also the author of the award-winning Human Body Detectives curriculum and book series. She's a contributing writer to Dandelion Moms, Organic Eats, Parents Canada, and Kiwi Magazine. During the webinar, please feel free to type any questions you might have into the chat box to participate in the Q&A with Dr. Heather at the end of her presentation. Um, I also want to make sure you're all aware that this will be recorded and emailed to you, so don't worry if you feel like you've missed anything because you'll be able to review it anytime you like. And with that, I will turn the mic over to Sorry, I think I messed up. Dr. Oh. Heather, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, did we just get disconnected? Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us and thank you for the lovely introduction. Um, you know, I should mention, Anna, maybe we haven't talked about this, but I actually practice mostly in California right now. Um, but I do go back and forth between Hawaii and California. But uh, uh, other than that, I think we should just get started. Is there a perfect time to, to be doing this webinar as we approach the winter months and um, cold and flu season is all around us. So let's just get started. Um, I do first need to start saying, you know, with my disclaimer, just saying that I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be able to diagnose or treat or do any suggestions with supplement dosing. Um, I know we're going to do a Q&A afterwards, and I love helping people and guiding people, directing people to where they need to go, but I won't be able to answer any specific questions. Um, so I just need to throw that out there. Um, and I think I should start just by talking a little bit about naturopathic medicine and um, what it's all about. Um, and why maybe I chose naturopathic medicine um, versus going to a conventional medical school. So originally, I, I actually, while I was applying to medical school, I was working for a medical doctor and I learned a ton, which was super fabulous. Uh, but I stumbled across a naturopathic doctor. Um, this was back in the 90s and I had no idea what naturopathic medicine was. So I called him up and Basically, he told me the, the six philosophies of naturopathic medicine, and I was just completely sold. So our first one is do no harm. Um, second is the healing power of nature, um, which is something that I really stick true to, is that the body has an innate a power to heal itself. Um, and I think we need to grasp onto that more. Um, and finding the cause, the root cause of what's going on, not just treating the symptom, the doctor is a teacher, um, prevention, which is what we're going to talk mostly about today, and treating the whole person, again, and not just the symptom. So these uh, philosophies really um, meant a lot to me and actually completely changed my trajectory in the 90s and then ended up going to a naturopathic medical school in Portland, Oregon. Um, and I love this quote, the superb physician treats disease before it occurs. Um, when I was taking Chinese medicine in school, our, the Chinese medicine teacher spoke about that and how that if you got, get sick in China, your doctor has to pay you because his job is to make sure you don't get sick. <laughs> and I, I don't know if they still practice that there, but I just remember thinking that is, is so powerful because I feel like that is my job is to really help you um, and your body be the healthiest it can be. Oh, and if it does get sick, that you can bounce back fast because that's very important. Okay, so in naturopathic school, um, we take uh, a year of pharmacology, um, or maybe it was two years, I can't remember, but so I am able to prescribe some um, 
um, pharmaceuticals, um, but I rely mostly on some of the treatment modalities that I learned in school, and one of them being hydrotherapy. And it's basically using hot and cold, well, water, um, and using contrast of hot and cold to help um, bring a therapeutic benefit to what is, is, is happening in the body. So it helps increase circulation, it's very calming. Um, and I use hydrotherapy, I, I actually prescribe it to everybody who comes to see me, whether they have a sore throat or a headache, or it's a baby who's teething, it can be really powerful, or, or even a child who's having a hard time falling asleep at night because it is very calming to the nervous system. So, um, so with the magic socks and t-shirts, what I usually suggest for people to do is make sure they have a pair of cotton socks and a pair of wool socks. And you can either warm the, your foot, the foot up with um, your hands or after a nice hot bath so the feet are super warm. And that would be like the hot part. And then you would take your, um, take your socks that have been soaking in cold ice water, wring them out so they're not dripping, but that, that they're, they're cold. And you put that, those on the feet and then you put the wool socks over top. So by doing this, the body is, oh, the, the blood vessels are, are dilating and constricting and increasing the circulation and the body's going to want to bring um, blood down to the feet to warm it up. So if there's any head congestion, whether it's from teething or sore throat or ear infections, um, nasal con congestion, sinus infection, it's gonna help drain the blood from your head down to your feet. And that usually really, really helps um, with any head congestion of any sort. Um, and, but I also suggest this a lot for, for babies who have a hard time falling asleep at night because it can be very calming and just the healing touch of mom or dad or auntie or an uncle who can help in putting the baby to sleep or the young child. Um, let's see. And then the other um, hydrotherapy practice that I use are, is castor oil packs. And many people think about castor oil um, for just to be over the liver to help with liver detoxification. But actually, I use it a lot for any kind of digestive upset, whether there's some diarrhea or bloating or gas. And when you use it, um, it really, like hydrotherapy, enhances the circulation in the abdominal area um, and helps the tissues and all the organs underneath get the, um, the, the blood circulation that they need. Um, and it helps decrease inflammation. So with castor oil, again, you just need to, you need to get your castor oil, get um, an old white cloth um, or an old towel and soak it with the castor oil. Again, not so that it's dripping, but it's pretty wet. You can put that over your lower abdomen um, and then put a hot water bottle on top and then just hang out for 45 minutes. Um, read a book, listen to music, take a nap. Um, if you have a child, maybe you can read to them or let them watch a TV show. It's extremely relaxing. I have um, people actually become quite addicted to this because it makes them feel really great, especially if there's any constipation or any digestive upset, they almost immediately feel better. Um, the third um, hydrotherapy that I suggest to people on a regular basis is doing some dry skin brushing. And this helps promote the lymphatic flow in the body. Um, and the lymphatic system and stimulates the blood flow. And we really do need this. The lymphatic system doesn't have any muscles attached to it, so it does need to be stimulated in order for it to work. And the lymphatic system helps collect all of kind of the debris, I guess you could say, in the body to help it be um, um, cleaned out or removed from the body. So and it's a very simple, it doesn't cost any money except for buying the, the um, loofah brush. Um, and all you need to do is buy the brush, um, keep it dry, um, and then just right before you get into the shower, brush, the, brush your skin very lightly um, up towards your heart in one sweeping motion. Um, so if you're going up your arm, 
towards your heart, if you're coming from your legs, up towards your abdomen, towards your heart. And you can just do that, um, you know, and your whole body takes, you know, maybe 30 seconds, not very long. So these three things can be used as a prevention um, or if you're in um, a situation, a sore throat or a stomach ache, you can do that. Um, actually, let me add one more thing. So for a preventative way to use hydrotherapy, one thing that I um, am always suggesting to my patients, they're not very excited about it, but once they get into it, they love it, is when you're in the shower, everyone takes a nice hot shower, but before you tr uh, turn off your shower, turn off the hot water and blast your body with cold water. Now this really sounds scary, but it really wakes you up and it feels really great, gets your blood circulating and um, can be a really great way to prevent colds and flus. Okay, so the next modality, that uh, treatment modality that I learned in school that um, I use all the time in my practice is botanical medicine. So there's a lot of different ways that botanical medicine or herbal medicine can be dispensed. And there's um, a de decoction, which is basically when we think about um, using a herbal tea, which I love using for people. And I suggest using herbal teas that you can either buy um, at the grocery store or you can get the dry herbs and make them yourself. And um, it's just, um, using the, the herb and putting boiling water on it and letting it steep. Um, you can do this either in hot or cold water. So if you're gonna do cold water, you could put it out um, outside and let the sun help it diffuse or just throw it into your fridge and, and let it diffuse overnight. Um, and so I, I do use that as like a, a daily thing, whether it's a detox tea or something that helps um, with um, digestion um, or, peppermint tea or, you know, just it's, it's really great to start incorporating herbal teas into your daily practice because not only is it hydrating, but there are some nutrients that are found in the herbs that can be really helpful for your body to use. So, um, and then we have tinctures and glycerides and they are made by combining ground herbs with alcohol, glycerin or vinegar and use um, internally. I, in my practice, I use either an alcohol-based tincture for um, some of my adult patients and teenagers. And with um, children, I use a glycerate, glycerite-based um, tincture because it usually tastes better. Sometimes there is honey in it, so you have to be careful with children under the age of one. So take note on that. The only problem with the glyceride is it does need to be refrigerated. And then of course there's the dried and encapsulated, which is, you know, you're taking the dried herbs and putting it into a capsule. And I'm sure most of my patients prefer using capsules instead of tinctures because sometimes they don't taste all that great. Um, but I do like using a glyceride and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later on. So homeopathy is the other um, modality that I use quite frequently. There's, um, it's a very difficult um, practice of medicine, so um, I don't use it um, as a primary way to treat patients. I use it in a combination with uh, um, botanical medicine and hydrotherapy and just um, vitamins and minerals and nutrition and things. But I do find it extremely powerful, and I've seen really incredible results by using homeopathy. So I think you know, bringing it into your natural pharmacy is, um, is really nice to have. Um, so the philosophy behind homeopathy is that like cures like, and this means that a substance that causes symptoms of a disease in a healthy person would, um, would cure similar symptoms in a sick person. So like cures like, and I, I think one of my perfect examples of this is a patient who would come to me and they're having anxiety and feeling like they can't calm down and they're jittery. So I would, you know, when I see a patient like that, I'm thinking, wow, maybe they drank too much coffee. So I would be thinking of using um, the remedy coffea that might help them with their anxiety. Um, so 
with that, uh, homeopathy can be a little bit tricky because you have to um, understand um, the symptoms really well and be able to um, connect that to a specific remedy. And so you have to ask really, to really get the right remedy, it's um, important to ask the specific questions that seem maybe a little bit silly, but you know, really can open the door to finding the best remedy. So like, are they thirsty? And then diving deeper, do they prefer cold water or, or warm drinks? Do they feel angry? Are they frightened? Um, and so asking these questions really help you um, choose the best homeopathic um, remedy. Um, and I'm not sure if, if anybody has used homeopathy, it comes in these little tube dispensers and you can dispense typically what i suggest is you know three pellets into the cap and then you just can place it under the tongue um, mindful that you don't use your hands because it's more of an energetic medicine and then i usually suggest you know every three hours up to three times or until the pain or swelling or the symptoms um, disappear so some of them, these are some of the, the top five homeopathics that I suggest to patients to keep into in their natural pharmacy um, that are really helpful for colds and flus. So I'll just go over them briefly. The Ferrum Foss is a great one because if you're not 100% sure of um, what's going on and you, you can't like get exact um, symptom picture or the patient can't really talk to you, it's a really good one to, to fall back on. Um, but the one big thing is that um, it's, it's an early onset. Um, so it comes on quite fast and you're not really quite sure why because um, there's no really other symptoms. Um, sometimes they might feel better with touch and with cold application and sometimes they feel worse lying on the right side. So those are some of the symptoms that, you know, that you're going to be looking for when you're trying to figure out which remedy is the best. Um, belladonna is a great one um, that I use quite frequently in children because um, it's, when I think about a, a child who has belladonna symptoms, they are, they, they all of a sudden get a high fever and their face becomes really red. Um, my older daughter, was always the perfect um, belladonna patient. She would be laughing and smiling and literally like five minutes later, her face would be red and she'd have 103 fever. Um, when this happens, we see a lot of times the feet and the hands are cold. Um, they're sensitive to light and sound and the, there could be some bad dreams or night terrors that tie into a belladonna picture. Aconite is um, a really good remedy to give um, right when you feel like a cold or flu is coming on. Um, the patient is usually quite fearful. Um, there is, they're restless and there's a lot of, there, there can be some head pain that's involved with it. Um, Brionia is when it's, it's kind of the opposite of Belladonna where the fever is developing a little bit slow, slowly over a few days. Um, they don't really wanna to be touched because they have body aches. They feel worse with moving, um, but they crave cold drinks. Um, they can be quite ir irritable. So this is a good, actually, um, because of the body aches, more of a flu picture. Um, but we're gonna talk about the difference between cold and flu, I think, in the next slide. And gelsinium, um, again, is a really good uh, flu homeopathic. Um, it's good to keep on hand for a change of season because the, a lot of people have a hard time going from you know a, an 80 degree day and then the next day is 60 which happens a lot in the springtime and the fall so it's a good transitional remedy um, there's usually no thirst and they feel heavy and weak um, so these are some of the top remedies that i like to keep on hands for colds and flus um, i think again just going back to the disclaimer if there's any um, you know, it's always great to consult with your primary care phys physician or your um, naturopathic doctor, or even your acupuncturist or chiropractor um, to make sure that you're getting the, the, the right remedy. Um, I like to use essential oils as, uh, or I like to have them as part um, 
uh, uh, of my natural farming see as well because they can be really helpful for moods and emotions so if any of you have teenagers out there i highly suggest that you go get a diffuser for them to use in their bedroom um, and even like a spray bottle or uh, some kind of roller bottle so that they can carry around with them um, to help with their their moods and their emotions that uh, teenagers go through their roller coaster hormonal teenage years so these are i wrote down some of the ones that i like to keep handy to for to help with that um, for digestion um, peppermint ginger thyme lemon and cinnamon are all really nice to have handy um, it's always important i need to 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 mention is to use a carrier oil and that could be olive oil a jehovah oil even coconut oil to you know like mixing it um, like pepper you don't want to put peppermint directly on the skin and you don't want to put ginger directly on the skin so mixing it with a carrier oil is a great um is is is, is actually quite essential because essential oils are very very strong they're concentrated um, herbal extracts so um, they can burn the skin so using a carrier oil is very important um, for the immune system oregano and eucalyptus um, are great I actually suggest eucalyptus quite often and um, what you can do is just put um, a drop in with a carrier oil and you can rub that on your child's feet um, Bottom of, their, bottom of their feet before you do the magic socks and that can really help um, with the um, circulation and helping them feel better. And even using eucalyptus and a diffuser, if there is any sinus infections or um, um, even earaches or just anything that can help open up um, the cavities in, in the head if there's any inflammation. I also kind of just a little side note is for prevention is keeping the eucalyptus essential oil in the bathroom and before you have your hot shower you can place a drop or two at the bottom and then you know once you put on the hot water um, it makes the room the shower smell great and kind of helps open everything up um, so a good steam inhalation okay so do you have a cold or a flu so it's it's great to understand what the difference is between the, the two, especially when you're using homeopathy. So when I think about a cold, I think about it's all in the nose. And um, usually we'll begin one to five days after being exposed to a virus or a bacteria. So this is a great preventative tip too. So if you notice that there's some of the kids in your cl classmates to your kids um, are getting sick, or if you're at work and some of your colleagues are starting to get sick, that's when I would start doing, you know, some of the hydrotherapy and maybe, you know, start doing some botanical medicine, um, maybe take notice of some of the homeopathy, it's just as a prevention. Um, symptoms will mainly stay in the nose, giving a runny, stuffy nose and some sneezing symptoms. And sometimes you get a fever with a cold, but, a, Typically, that's more um, when you have the flu. So when you have the flu, you're sick all over. Um, it usually comes on abruptly with hardly any notice. Generally, there will be a high fever um, and with a flush face, body aches, lack of energy. So belladonna might be really great to start with homeopathically, but you might want to move into a different remedy um, as the body aches and lack of energy um, start. Um, after a few days, symptoms may travel down to the respiratory system, creating more sore throats, coughs, and bronchitis. So from a preventative manner, um, these are some of the remedies that I, or supplements that I keep handy. Um, again, like if you're seeing some classmates are getting sick or colleagues are getting sick, it's, it's a good idea to kind of up your multivitamin intake, make sure you're eating really well, make sure you're sleeping really well. Um, and making sure um, you're taking some of these um, these, uh, these supplements. Um, so the first one that I, I suggest a lot um, to, to everyone is I, I actually, it's not even really part of a pharmacy. I kind of suggest as part of um, your, your pantry or your fridge. It's always there and you should, you know, try to take it, you know, a few times a week. 
um, are the essential fatty acids. Um, they're vital to being alive. Um, we can't make them, so we need to get them from our food. Um, they are, we're thinking like cod liver oil um, um, and any, any kind of omega-3. It's really great um, for um, inflammation, depression, um, helps with blood pressure and strokes. Um, it's great for calming to the nervous system. It's good for the skin. Um, I really like using cod liver oil because it naturally has vitamin A and vitamin D in it, which is very supportive to the immune system. Um, I primarily use the brand Nordic Naturals, so I'm not sure if that was okay to plug in there, but um, I know they do a lot of um, testing, third-party testing and quality control, so I know that their oils are really great. Um, you do have to be careful with buying any kind of oil, whether it's olive oil or cod liver oil or flaxseed oil, because oils can go rancid um, quite quickly. And so, and that can cause more harm in the body. So making sure that you have a really good brand is, is essential. So if you don't want to have an essential fatty acid, omega-3, you can use um, you know, avocado oils, um, olive oil, nuts and seeds um, are all really great food options. Probiotics, um, they're pretty well known right now. Um, they're the friendly bacteria in your gut. They help keep the digestive system strong and healthy. Um, they help with um, the absorption of minerals and vitamins. Um, approximately 70% of the immune system is in the digestive system. So making sure that we are, um, have a good amount of pro, uh, good bacteria is important for our immune system. Um, a lot of probiotics that you buy do need to be refrigerated. Um, actually, I <laughs> plugging Nat Nordic Naturals again, I, I don't work for them, but um, they do have a probiotic that doesn't need to be refrigerated. So I like this one because it's ideal for traveling. Um, but there's some really other great ones on the market and I'm always happy to answer any um, questions if you want to shoot me an email at any time. Um, I also keep very well immune herbal powder Candy, I love this mixture, especially for children. Um, and as a preventative, it tastes really great. It has elderberry in it. It's um, got astragalus in it, I think. I, there's um, enlarged, like it has some really great um, herbs in there that um, is in a powder form, which makes it really easy to either throw in a smoothie or add to a yogurt or even an applesauce. Um, it tastes really great, or just even adding it to water. Um, kids will not, they'll probably ask for it because it tastes great. I, um, <clears throat> mushrooms um, are very um, great for the immune system. And I like this, uh, the innate um, uh, Maki Gold 404. It's got the mushrooms in it and has some vitamin C in it. And it can be a really great preventative um, supplement to take before um, you know, if there's people around you or who are sick, um, or this is more of an adult supplement, um, but it's nice to have handy. Or if you are start, if you're just starting to feel sick, that's when it's a good time to take it. Um, the other things that I like to keep handy are a throat spray, and Wise Woman Herbal has a great throat spray. Um, kids usually like it; um, they don't mind it being sprayed at the back of their throat. Um, Bio Botanical also has a really great one. Um, and I travel with this all the time. It's great to bring on airplanes with you. Um, I love a good elderberry glycerite and um, vitamin C is really great to have handy. So I think it's always important to remember the basics. Um, and people, patients laugh at me when I say this because, you know, you know, it's like I'm almost lecturing them, <laughs> but it's not. We, it's, it's always great to be reminded. Um, hygiene is really essential. Um, we've got to be remember, we have to remember to wash our hands. Um, we don't need to be using, um, we only really need to be using warm water and soap. We don't need to be, um, essential oils can be, come in handy here too, but don't need to use all of those, um, other ways to wash our hands that might not be so really great for our bodies. So just, you know, soap and water, 
just making sure that you um, are washing your hands. Um, eat whole colorful foods. I mean, they are packed with vitamins and minerals, phytonutrients that help support our immune systems and keep our family healthy. I teach physiology at a local university and I'm always telling them we can learn all this physiology is super important and understanding how our body works. But if we're not fueling our body with whole colorful foods, the, these physiology can't happen. So really that is the basis is making sure that we're really eating whole colorful foods, um, a lot of plant-based um, vegetables. I typically, people laugh at me when I say this too, but eating vegetables, for breakfast, you know, it just kind of sets a good tone for the day um, and encourages you to eat more vegetables throughout the day. Um, just, you know, if you're having an omelet, put a ton of vegetables in it. Um, if you're having a bowl of cereal, um, put a ton of berries in there, um, blueberries, strawberries, you know, whatever. If you're making a smoothie, you can put add sweet potatoes. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can get your vegetables in at breakfast time. Drinking water, herbal tea, like I spoke about earlier. Um, I am constantly suggesting um, herbal tea because it tastes better than just plain water. Um, but keeping ourselves hydrated helps with blood circulation and helps um, fuel our cells with the nutrients and oxygen and white blood cells. And lastly, getting a good night's sleep. Sometimes if you're starting to feel sick, it just takes you know one really good sleep or one really good nap to ward off five days of being really sick. So usually when people are feeling like they're getting sick or they are sick, um, I suggest really kind of going at it hard. And so doing something every three hours for three days straight. So taking the nights off, of course, but if you're doing something every three hours, you're really keeping the immune system stimulated and supported so that it can do what it needs to do. Um, so of course, um, sleep. If you can nap, sleep, more rest you can get, the better. Um, so vitamin C, um, I, think is, is, is really great for the immune system. Um, and so say you wake up at 8 a.m., you can take some vitamin C with breakfast. Then a couple hours later, you could do immune tincture um, or a capsule, depending on which one feels good to you. Then a couple hours later, do a homeopathic. And then a couple hours later, you can do some hydrotherapy. And then you can just keep rotating that for three days. And um, in between, make sure you're drinking a lot of fluids, herbal teas. You can use water that's infused with lemon and oranges. Um, this is when elderberry glyceride or syrup um, comes into play, especially children love this and adults love it as well. But I will just make um, a purple juice is what I used to call it for my girls when they got sick when they were younger. And I would just put it in a glass with a straw or a water bottle or a sippy cup, and they could just sip on it all day long. Um, and the elderberry, again, it tastes really great and people and kids are super compliant with it. If there are, if your child has a sore throat, making popsicles is a really good thing. Um, so you can um, even use an ice cube tray and um, let them suck on the ice cubes during the day. And that's a good way to get the elderberry in and help to soothe a sore throat. Um, so I do say every three hours for three to five days straight. Um, usually I say three days. And then if people feel better after three days, then for the next four days, I have them start weaning off. So maybe not every three hours, but every four hours, but that you're still supporting your body. What I see over and over again is after three days, people feel so much better that they stop doing everything. And then a couple of weeks later, or even a week later, they start to get sick again. So I think it's really important to make sure that even when you start feeling better, that you add in a couple more days so that you can really strengthen up your immune system because it's working really hard when we're sick and it's needs to get, you know, it's reserves 
ready in case something else they are presented with. Um, so that's really um, something to always remember because um, that's when I see a lot of people getting sick over and over again is because you know they didn't give their body enough time to um, regroup and to get their you know the immune system soldiers you know all ready to to start you know making sure that they don't get sick again. Um, <clears throat> then the other thing that I I, I definitely want to add in is making sure that you you are supplement savvy. There's so many brands out there and there's no regulation. Um, and I see this over and over again when patients come into me with bag fulls. I know you, people hear the story, but it's actually quite true. They come into me and they have bag fulls of supplements, and they're from the big box stores. Um, and I mean, a great example is using echinacea. You know, we want to use the root is more helpful than the leaf, but the leaf is cheaper to use. So when you're using a um, you know, buying, say, an Echinacea product from not such a great supplement company, they're probably primarily using the leaf because it's cheaper than using the root. So you're paying for something that's really not going to work and you're not going to get the benefits that you need. So making sure you do a little bit of due diligence and making sure you, you pick a, a company that's doing some really good testing um, um, is just going to benefit benefit you um, in the long run and it's going to help to save money because um, you want to make sure that you're getting the best quality that you can for yourself and your family. All right, well, I guess that's it. Let's see, I don't know, did we make it on time? So is that 30 minutes? Okay, it's yes. over a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit over, but that's so okay. We still have time for a few questions. Okay. So I encourage everyone to start putting your questions in the chat box and we will get to as many as we can. And I'll just go ahead and kick it off here because I okay. have one that uh, I was <laughs> curious about. When you were talking about washing your hands, you mentioned some methods you weren't super familiar with. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on hand sanitizer when um, soap and water are unavailable? Well, I think if you can get one that's more essential oil based or, a, you know, a little bit cleaner than some of the ones that are over the counter that are, you know, um, made with some chemicals that actually have been linked to um, cancer and other autoimmune type diseases, um, I think you should really try to avoid those. But you know, soap is always your best bet. And then if you can find a hand sanitizer that's more essential oil based is probably your best bet. Um, so the holidays are going to be upon us before we know it. It's amazing that it's already almost halfway <laughs> through October. My I mind know. is blown. Um, what advice do you have for people who are traveling both in changing environments as well as just like general precautions they can take to prevent the cold and flus on airplanes or trains or other public spaces? Yeah, well, again, if you can get a hand sanitizer that you can, you know, travel with you that you can, you know, there's some great ones that you can just spray and there's some wipes. I think that's really the number one, keeping yourself hydrated. I, I do really like to use electrolytes when I travel. Um, and there's a lot of great ones that you can buy at some of the, the health food stores that are out there. Um, so you can put that into your water bottle and that you know, can be really great. Some of them are, um, have like some extra vitamin C in them. So that can be um, good. Um, you wanna keep yourself hydrated because that's a really important way for the body to be able to eliminate um, germs that, that it doesn't need or um, want in it <laughs> um, and keeps the mucous membranes like your nose and your sinuses nice and moist so that you are able to you know catch any kind of germs that come through the come into the body that way um, I can't tell you hands down using a throat spray um, there's some really great ones out in the market um, and there's zinc lozenges that I suggest, drinking um, herbal teas um, that you can bring on the airplane with you um, and that have a lot of great herbs like echinacea and elderberry um, which is great because kids you know, don't mind that. That very well um, powder that I was talking about, 
that's a really great thing to travel with and put into your water bottle and drink when you're sick, when you're getting on an airplane, or even when you're in the car to have the kids drink that and you. I mean, um, and then how does one execute a magic suck? Execute. So what I, with, a, with children, what I would do um, is usually they're having a hot bath or a hot shower. Um, so while they're in their hot bath, I usually get a bucket or not a bucket, uh, a bowl with ice um, in it and water, like ice water. And then I put the cotton socks in the bowl so that they're soaking in the cold um, water. And when the kids get out of the bath, um, you know, you wrap them up really great, get their pajamas on, um, and you can, you know, warm up their feet with your hands again, and then um, put the cold, wet socks. You don't want it dripping, so, you know, rinse them out a little bit, and then just put the wet socks on, and then immediately put the, the wool socks on. And the wool is what helps keep the, the, the cotton, the wet socks, not from seeping out, so it keeps it all together, um, and that will help um, stimulate um, circulation. And then just hop into bed and keep them all cozy and warm. And like literally within 30 seconds, they all kids already feel better, and they're already starting to feel like this calm, and it really helps with sleep. That's incredible. Yeah, it's, um, and I do the same thing if there's. Um, a, like a cough um, and some lung congestion. So instead of doing that on the feet, I use a wet t-shirt. It's a little bit And then like harder, a wool sweater? And then a wool sweater. Um, you really want to make sure it's, you're putting wool on top. Um, you can use polar fleece, but you want to trap in the, 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 um, the wetness. You don't want it to be seeping through some cotton. It's not going to be able, you want to keep the heat in. Um, but that's a, the t-shirt the is a little bit trickier of a sell to kids, but um, my teenagers who, you know, and I have a 21 year old and a 17 year old and they just do it now automatically if they, they have some, a cough because they know that it makes them feel better. And it helps it. The other thing is that it really helps sleep better. So if you have a child who's coughing during the night, if you can get them to do a magic t-shirt, it can be really helpful for them to sleep through the night. Excellent. Um, I think I believe the brand you mentioned was Nordic Naturals. Do you have any other brands that you recommend for herbs or tinctures? Yeah, I really like using um, Thorn and Ortho Molecular. I love Wise Woman Herbals. Um, Integrative Therapeutics is really great. Um, um, Vital. Uh, nutrients is I think is the company that makes the berry well um, and if anybody has questions and, and where to get these because a lot of times you can't buy these at at say Whole Foods or Sprouts um, I can help you um, make sure that you are, are shopping where you need to shop to get the good quality supplements because sometimes Amazon is not the best place to go because there's a lot of resellers and people selling expired products too. So um, if anybody has questions, just send me an email. That is very good to know. Thank you very much. Um, so let's say I want to incorporate more natural medicine into my home and I'm starting from scratch. What are maybe three of the first products you would say I should get ASAP to start my natural medicine cabinet? Um, I think an elderberry tincture. Um, or the berry well powder. Um, I would definitely make sure you have vitamin C handy. Um, and uh, so the, those would probably be my two top for like um, um, to have like supplement wise um, for like if you're starting to feel sick to prevent. I think getting um, a, a cod liver oil if you're not vegan or vegetarian, it's a really great thing because it does have the vitamin A and the vitamin D in there, which is really good for the immune system. Um, I think a good multivitamin is really important. And then if you can get a probiotic. 
Great. Well, unfortunately, we're coming to the end of our time with Dr. Heather. So I want to thank all of um, our attendees for joining us today um, and Dr. Heather for presenting. Uh, Dr. Heather's books and curriculum series, Human Body Detectives, is available at the co-op. And for a very limited time, you can add this awesome curriculum to your home school and save 89%. Um, plus, you get a free workbook and audio CD, which is really, really fun. So Dr. Heather, thank you so much for sharing your time with all of us today. And again, to our attendees, thank you for joining. It's, um, we're always just very grateful to be able to share in your day. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your afternoon and stay healthy this cold and flu season.